Welcome back, everyone. In the previous video, we introduced the method of partial fractions, which allowed us to decompose a rational function, that is a quotient of polynomials, into a sum of much simpler rational functions for which when you put this into an integral, things become much simpler. Now, I gave you the general method in the previous video. And so the goal with this video is to go through some examples and see how the method can be applied in a range of circumstances one might encounter. So let me start uh, with an example right off the bat. And in this case, let's ask ourselves to evaluate uh, the integral of 6x plus 7 over x plus 2 squared. So again, the uh, as what you saw in the previous example in the last video, this thing is already factored for us. Uh, in this case, you have a double root at x equal to minus 2 for the, uh, for the denominator of this fraction. And if we just remind ourselves the general procedure here for the method of partial fractions from the previous video, and says that if we have a factor, and in this case, m is the number of times it appears as a, a factor, in our current example, m is equal to 2, then we're going to expand this as a constant uh, over the factor plus a constant over the factor squared. So that means that we will write 6x plus 7 divided by x plus 2 squared as a over x plus 2 plus b over x plus 2 squared. And as we did with the previous examples that we've seen, we need to find a and b in this case so that we can write this original quotient, 6x plus 7 divided by x plus 2 squared, as this sum of partial fractions. So the common denominator here is x plus 2 squared. And this is achieved by multiplying a times x plus 2, and b will not change. So this gives us 6x plus 7 is equal to, I'm going to do it all in one step here, ax plus, and now we have 2a plus b. Aligning up the coefficients here is a fairly easy process. We can see that a has to be equal to six because we only have ax on the right-hand side and six x on the left-hand side. And this gives us that two a plus b, which is equal to seven, this is 12, sorry, 12 plus b, which is equal to seven, which tells us that b is equal to minus five. And so therefore, I can go back to my original integral now, and I can say that this quotient is the same as six over x plus two minus five over x plus two squared dx. And now these are relatively simple integrals that need to be calculated. In this case, we have one over x plus two, uh, and the other one is, sorry, one over x plus two squared dx. Now, if you'd like, you can use the substitution for the previous or for the second integral. If you'd like me to write it a little nicer for you, this could be also written as x plus two to the power of minus two. You can do a substitution for x plus two if you'd like. Uh, then you're essentially integrating uh, u to the minus two. It's a regular sort of polynomial style. I know it's not actually a polynomial. Polynomial style, same root, uh, same procedure. And then we can get a final answer here of the following. So we get a minus when you do that, uh, dividing by the new power, which was minus one, and you get x plus two to the minus one. And then all plus c, because this was an indefinite integral. OK, let's keep rolling with the examples. So let me show you some more. So example two for the day, let's say we have 2x cubed minus 
four X squared minus X minus three divided by X squared minus two X minus three DX. Now, we've got an issue right off the bat. This is an improper rational function. Remember, so if I go back, I said that if I'm given uh, f of x divided by g of x, we should have that the degree of f is lower than the degree of g. That is what's referred to as a proper rational function. And that's the only way we're going to be able to do the method of partial fractions. So the question is, what do we do, right? What is it that should be done to turn this thing into a proper fraction? Well, you might hate hearing this, but we're gonna have to do some long division. Remember, fractions are just a shorthand for asking us to divide things. So we are going to divide the function 2x cubed minus 4x squared minus x minus three by x squared minus 2x minus three. If you uh, remember this procedure, you remember that what you want to do is you want to multiply this function on the outside uh, by an appropriate function of x in order to, when these things are subtracted, to knock off this highest power term uh, for your numerator here. And so in this case, you're going to multiply by 2x. And so let's put the result of 2x times x squared minus 2x minus 3 down here. I get 2x cubed minus 4x squared and minus 3x. I'm uh, sorry, minus 6x, I'm sorry. And if you subtract these things, you get that the 2x cubes cancel each other out. And we got a bonus here, the minus 4x squareds also cancel each other out. And so we get a nice 5x minus 3. And now what you can see is that the result now is a lower degree than our, our denominator. So that means that this tells us that this expression, this quotient, is given by 2x and then plus the remainder, 5x minus 3 divided by x squared minus 2, sorry, minus 2x minus 3. And so that means that this whole integral up here now becomes the integral of 2x plus 5x minus 3, x squared minus 2x minus 3, dx. And if you're feeling a little bit of deja vu, uh, that's because we've seen this quotient before. This quotient, 5x minus 3 divided by x squared minus 2x minus 3, well, that was actually the example that I gave uh, to motivate this all in the previous video. Remember, we saw that this quotient can be written as 2 over x plus 1 plus 3 over x minus 3. And in fact, we showed in that video exactly how we did this using the method of partial fractions. So fortunately for us, uh, we don't have to actually solve this because we've already done it. So maybe things are getting a little ugly up here. Let me continue down right here. The first piece of this is integrating up a 2x. So now we have 2x dx. And I'm going to expand out that 5x minus 3 over x squared minus 2x minus 3. And this is going to leave me with 2 over x plus 1 dx and the integral of 3 over x minus 3 dx. And now these are all relatively simple integrals to evaluate. We get x squared plus 2 natural logarithm absolute value x plus one plus three natural logarithm absolute value of x minus three. And then don't forget the plus C that tax on the end there. Okay, so that shows us that sometimes we're gonna have to use long division. That's how you're gonna get yourself from an improper 
rational function where the degree of the numerator is bigger than the degree of the denominator down to uh, a proper integral or sorry, a proper rational function. This is just like saying seven over five is one and two fifths. That's the exact same procedure, right? So we, we say seven over five would be uh, an improper fraction, whereas one and two fifths, now we have a proper fraction there, two over five. It's exactly the same idea. Okay, let me give you another example. To continue illustrating this, suppose we were given this integral. Okay, well then let me try and decompose this into partial fractions to start. Again, it's already factored for us, so we don't have to worry too much about doing the factoring, but we see we'd have a double root uh, of x equal to one, that's the x minus one squared. And we've got a non-real set of roots, right? The x squared plus one can't be factored further. So that is an irreducible polynomial in this case. And so we have to apply both steps one and two from the method of partial fractions. So for the irreducible polynomial, we know that we put a linear function in the numerator and for the double root, we have just the, the factor on its own and then plus one over the factor squared. Well then, if we're going to uh, find a common denominator here, the common denominator is found by multiplying all of those terms together. And so all of those denominators on the right-hand side together. And so the result after setting the numerators equal to each other is going to give us ax plus b times x minus one squared. That's what the first term was missing in terms of a denominator. Plus c times x squared plus one. And you need one more factor of x minus one. And then d, you're missing an x squared plus one term here. So things are getting complicated already, right? We can see that this is going to give us a cubic polynomial. And so if you want to expand this out and I'm going to do it all in one step, I'm gonna expand it out and I'm gonna collect it in powers of X's. So if you want, pause the video and try and scribble down on, a, on your notes, what this should come out to and you can double check with my solution here. So you get A plus C X cubed and then plus minus 2a plus b minus c plus d x squared plus a minus 2b plus c x plus b minus c plus d. Okay. Now we've got a bunch of equations that are going to come out of this. So let's say the coefficients so coef, I'm going to use this shorthand because we'll write coefficients a lot, of x cubed. On the left-hand side, there's not a single x cubed term. So the coefficient is zero. On the right-hand side, it is a plus c. The coef of x squared. Again, the left-hand side, there's not a single x squared term. So coefficient is zero. And on the right-hand side, this is minus 2a plus b minus c plus d. All right, let's do the linear terms. On the left-hand side, there are minus two, there's a minus two times x. On the right-hand side, there's an a minus 2b plus c times x. And finally, the the order or the one terms, the constant terms, x to the zero terms, there is a constant four on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, there's b minus c plus d. Now I'm gonna give these all numbers, these equations, because there's four of them, uh, and we'll actually solve them. So the first thing that I want you to see actually is that in terms of the right-hand sides, in equation four, 
you can see that the B minus C plus D is also showing up in equation two, B minus C plus D. So let's take uh, equation two and let's subtract equation four from it. So that is going to knock off the B minus C plus D from the right hand side. You're gonna get zero minus four on the left. So minus four. And the only thing you're left with is minus two A. So this is good. This tells us that A is equal to two. Maybe we'll put a box around it so we can see it as we go through. And then now that we know what A is, from equation one, we can get C because this tells us that C is equal to minus A, which is equal to minus two. So C, sorry, C is equal to minus two. Okay, so we've got uh, A and C, and actually you can see in equation number three, that allows us to get B. So this also says that B is equal to one half of A plus C uh, plus two. And now A is equal to two, C is equal to minus two. So the A plus C cancels out and you get two over two, which is equal to one. So this tells me B is equal to one. So life is pretty good. The only thing that I need now is to figure out what D is and I can use equation four for this. So from four, I get that uh, D is equal to four minus B plus C. And in this case, uh, you're getting one, four minus one minus two. So now D is equal to positive one. And so, just to see what we get here, this tells us that if you take uh, the quotient minus 2x plus 4 divided by x squared plus 1, x minus 1 squared, this is 2x uh, plus 1 divided by x squared plus 1 minus 2 over x minus 1 plus one over x minus one squared. And so now that we've decomposed our rational function into partial fractions, now we can evaluate the integral. So let's kick it over here. Let's start with the original integral that we wanted to find. So let's just write it all back down. Now we can use the partial sum representation. I get 2x plus 1 over x squared plus 1 minus 2 over x minus 1 plus 1 over x minus 1 squared dx. Now, immediately the first term, uh, you might be tempted to use substitution, for example, substituting x squared plus 1. You'll see it's not going to work, though. Um, what you can do instead, though, is you can take the first term, you can take that numerator and distribute it over the denominator. So in this case, you get this sequence. I will just write out every single integral term here so we can see everything laid out in front of us. And now in the first case, you can substitute for x squared plus one. You get that two x, you get du is equal to two x dx. So the first case, you can find the logarithm of x squared plus one. I'm not putting absolute values around it because x squared plus one is already positive, so I don't need it. Now I have the integral of one over x squared plus one. You might have to remind yourself on this, but this is the inverse tangent function. Then 
The other two we've seen before, we get two times the natural logarithm of x minus one. And the last one, x minus one to the minus one and plus C since it's an indefinite integral. So now we saw something a little more fancy coming in, right? We've seen an arctangent or an, a tan inverse showing up. And that's coming from the fact that we have one over a uh, quadratic function. So things get progressively more complicated uh, once these factors become more complicated. But nonetheless, you know, if you look at where we started here, this was a difficult quotient to deal with, but you know, it, we broke it down into these fairly simple pieces, at least pieces where we have explicit uh, answers to what each one of these things integrates to. Okay, let me further illustrate this with another example here. Uh, this is example number four. And so we have dx over x times x squared plus one squared. So in this case, we're seeing that irreducible quadratic function x squared plus one showing up again, except the difference here now is that we have two factors in the denominator. And so that tells us from the method of partial fractions, we need to be decomposing this function as follows. We have a over x, that's the original x factor. And then, now we have a linear function on top of the first factor of x squared plus one, and then another linear function on top of the second factor, the squared factor of x squared plus one. And again, you repeat the same procedure. You find a common denominator on the right-hand side. You set these two fractions equal to each other. Denominator is equal to denominator, which is the common denominator numerator equal to numerator. And so let me show you the numerator, setting them equal to each other gives you one on the left-hand side. And a times x squared plus one squared. So we can see this is gonna get ugly quick, right? This is gonna be a quartic function. And then uh, bx plus c, and you're gonna need an X up there and another factor of X squared plus one. And the last linear function DX plus uh, E, and the only thing it's missing is an X. So you can expand this out. I will leave that for you. I'll, I will skip down to show what this thing looks like when you organize it based on the power of X. So this will give you an A plus B x to the four plus cx cubed plus two a plus b plus d x squared plus c plus e x and plus a. Okay, now the nice thing is uh, the equations are gonna be relatively simple. Uh, and the reason for that is because uh, the left-hand side is just a constant function one. So actually, let's, uh, maybe I'll put this in red so we can emphasize it, but the last term, so uh, x zero, so coef on x zero gives me a is equal to one right off the bat. So I'm gonna just, uh, I'm gonna do these in a, in a weird order because they are much simpler if you do them in this order, right? So we immediately got what A is. Well, then the, the coef on x to the four, this is uh, zero is equal to A plus B, which tells me that B is equal to minus A, which is equal to minus one. So there we go, I've got B as well. Not bad. Um, the coefficient on x cubed. Well, there's no x cubed term on the left. On the right, there's just a c. So this tells me c is equal to zero. Okay, not too bad. Uh, now we can start going down the chain. The x squared coefficient 
we get again no x squared terms on the left, so zero. And I get 2a plus b plus d. And now we know a is equal to one, b is equal to minus one. And this is going to give me d is equal to minus one as well to satisfy that equation. And the last one is going to give me e. So in this case, I get. Again, no linear term, no x's on the left-hand side whatsoever. C plus E, now C is equal to zero. This also tells me that E is equal to zero. Okay, so let's put it all back together. Okay, so let me write what our solution is. We said that one over x times x squared plus one squared well, this thing is a over x, so one over x, plus b x plus c divided by x squared plus one. Now b is minus one, c is zero. And similarly, dx plus e over the square of that irreducible quadratic. Now d is minus one as well. And um, the e term is equal to zero. So let's put this into our integral now. And I'm going to break this up over the sum so that it's all done up nicely for us. So we just have some nice integration left to do. In this case, we get x over x squared plus one dx and then minus the integral of x over x squared plus one all squared dx. And so now I get the natural logarithm of the absolute value of x here. The middle term, you can do a substitution for x squared plus one, just like we saw in the previous example. You're going to have a factor of one half that comes through after you do that substitution. So I get minus one half ln of x squared plus one. So that's very, very similar to what we saw with the previous example. And the next one, maybe I will write it out just so that we have some frame of reference. So here, we're gonna say let u equal to x squared plus one. So now du is equal to two x dx, which tells us that one half du is equal to x dx. So that same substitution was coming in for the second integral in that chain. But in this case, I get one half the integral of u to the minus two du. And so this goes up to u to the minus one. You divide by minus one, that's gonna turn that minus sign into a plus sign. So I hope that none of this is really coming as a surprise for you. Um, but this is going to give me, so these pieces were already solved. Again, there's no absolute value on the middle term because that thing is always positive anyways. And I get plus one half u to the minus one plus c. And the last thing that I need to do is substitute back. So plus one half x squared plus one to the minus one plus c. So it's ugly, it's not very pretty, but nonetheless, uh, it's there, right? And, and that is a complete solution. I, it does not gonna get much prettier than that. We're not gonna be able to clean it up much. That's gonna be our answer. But basically what we've been able to see today is that we can, apply the method of partial fractions for any quotient of polynomials. It might take us moving from an improper uh, rational function using long division to get to a proper rational function. It might take a lot of algebra as well, right? Especially when we have multiple roots showing up or even these irreducible polynomials, you see that you know the algebraic equations for like your coefficients A, B, C, whatever it is, they, they get big fast and they, they might become complicated. But again, this is all within our skill set. These are things that we can solve up to some manageable level. And of course, you know, if things get too, too complicated, 
computers are very good at handling large routine calculations that humans could do, uh, but we just don't have the capacity to take uh, care of it and just, just keep track of all of these little things. But of course, the examples that we're going to see in this class are going to be manageable using pen and paper, just like the ones that we saw in this lecture. 